Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Okay, now we leave off the tension from Moses. Deuteronomy, last chapter, he dies. Now we pick it up with Joshua. The law is done. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the law, it's done. The lawgiver has died. We are now with Joshua. We are now a military camp campaign into the land of Israel. Joshua means Jehovah saves, just as much as Jesus means Jehovah saves. And when we go over to, to Acts chapter 7, a great place to check your King James Bible. Because this verse has been changed in King James Bibles. Acts chapter 7. And he's stuck. And we're looking at 35. Huh? 45. 45. Ears are not hearing too well. In Acts 7 45. Check your King James Bible because their King James Bible that does not have this passage. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drive out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Now, what we're reading 45 is the book of Joshua. But we got a problem because it doesn't say Joshua, it says Jesus. How cruel is the fact that the Bible has misnamed Stephen did not at all give Joshua's name and that is not an error because Joshua and Jesus are the same name Hebrews 4 8 Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8 so many people are looking at misidentifying God, God's incorrect, and great man I am to correct God. Hebrews 4, verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would had he afterwards have spoken of another day? That is supposed to be, or that is Joshua. Joshua get into the land, they fought all the land, they, they cast lots for the land, and then Israel rested. So two places in the New Testament, the name Joshua has been given the name Jesus because they mean the same. So when we close the book of the law, and we pick up the next book, we see Jesus. And there are churches today. We are in the time of Jesus. We're going into the time of Joshua. That they will go back into the law. And settle people on this side of Calvary on the law. Where Paul says not of works. At least any man boasts. But that of Jesus Christ. The children of Israel are going into their promised land. By Joshua. Remember, their promised land is their heaven. And they will get the new earth. Revelation 20, 21, and 22. And what will bring them into the land, Joshua. What will bring them in the land at second advent as we will pick them up, probably at Celepetra, but a place provided by God, Revelation 12, as we will pick up those remnant of the Jews and cast ourselves in the same path that Moses came, dies at the Jordan, and the same place that Joshua will cross, as we'll see, Lord willing, is the same place that John the Baptist is baptizing, will be the same way that Jesus will carry his bride 
him on horseback, us on asses, and the children of Israel, we will cross the same place where Joshua crosses and will bring finally those people, the Jews, into their land. Joshua is yet history, and yet it's also a prophet. It has, the parts of Joshua have happened, and they're going to happen again, not by Joshua, but by Jesus, with the Jewish people. The book of Hebrews, turn to Hebrews 11. Now, Hebrews 11, Abraham is definitely dead. And God told Abraham, I want you to leave your kindred. I want you to leave the land of your nativity. I have somewhere for you to go. Hebrews 11, verse 8. And by faith, Abraham... When he was called to go out unto a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. There's a land promise. And by faith he sojourned the land of promise, as a strange as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the hairs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He never got that. Is God a liar? No. He'll get it when Jesus Christ takes over the land. And in the millennium, when we'll see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes and Joshua and Moses and Elijah and Elijah we will meet and talk and be with those people Moses my servant chapter 1 verse 2 Moses my servant is dead the lawgiver has died now therefore arise Go over this Jordan, thou, and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to ch the children of Israel. Now there's the crossover. See that river? It's a mighty river. You're going across it. You hear what I said? You're going to cross. Well, isn't that interesting? You're going to cross over. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that which I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, there is conquer. After the cross comes conquer. After the cross of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, oh death, where is your sin? Oh grave, where is your victory? If I were to die right now, if I were to die before the rapture, I'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. As quick as ever time could not ever be measured that quick. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, that's way up north. That's up by Babylon. It's up where Iraq all the land of the Hittites unto the great sea the Mediterranean Sea toward the going down of the Sun it would be west Sun going down west comes up in the east shall be your coast there's only one time in the biblical history that this land grant has been given fully and that's under David and Solomon and that was only a short time but oh, when Jesus comes back, it looks like that great river Euphrates, even though the earth has been changed completely, that there's still that river Euphrates there. Jerusalem will be the highest point in all the world, and all the world will be like a, a, a complete plain. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. We're going to read about all those days, and Joshua and his life will end at the end of this book. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. 
I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Same promise given to Moses is given to Joshua. The same holds true for Jesus. You go to that cross, you get conquered, and I'll give you the whole world. I'll give you everything. Everything that Satan offered you, pfft, Satan only had it for a moment of time. Jesus will get it for all eternity. Matter of fact, what Satan offered Jesus is the old earth. The old kingdom. Sin. What Jesus Christ will get will be the new Jerusalem, the new earth, the new heavens, with no Satan, no sin, no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. A complete people called the church that will love him for all eternity. And Jewish people that will do what God expects from them. And Gentiles beforehand that obeyed God. What man is able to stand before Jesus Christ today? What man is going to step up to Jesus and conquer Jesus on his throne? No one. Once Jesus sets up his throne, Satan's going to try to outdo it, outcast it. At the end of a thousand years, God said, you're dead. Bye. Next. That reign of Jesus will be forever and ever and ever. It will be his bride. We're not going to be his royal subjects. We're going to be his bride. Be strong and of good courage. Why? Because the moment they cross that Jordan River, which we will read about, as soon as they cross that Jordan River, and they are in that land that God has promised, they are now in enemy, enemy territory. Everybody that is in that land once they cross is their enemy. Everybody in that land is an enemy of God. God will, has told them and will tell them, everybody that's in that land, you're to wipe them all out. You're to destroy man, women, child, get rid of them and their sins and destroy all their religion. And they're going to feel the same way about the children of Israel. No one loves you on that side of the river. You better be strong. better be good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Joshua is going to set the ancient landmarks of this land amongst the eleven and a half tribes. Ten and a half tribes. There's two and a half tribes that have already settled on the wrong side of the Jordan. And whatever that subtracts from twelve. He's going to set the bonds. And when you read about the ancient landmarks, and when you read about the landmarks in the Bible, they have been set by Joshua. And we'll also learn that Caleb, the two spies that went into the land that were faithful to God, they're going to set forth. They're going to say, this is, this, this is uh, Judah's land. This is Benjamin's land. This is Dan's land. This is Zebulun's land. And you're not to change it. King Ahab tried to change it. And you don't mess with it. Be strong of good courage, because you're going to enemy lands. For unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land, which they will by the end of the book, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. We will we'll see the names of the cities and places, if the Lord carries. It would be great if the Lord came now and God said, okay, we're going to spend this part of eternity. We're going to do the book of Joshua. Oh, right. Who's great? And here's your instructor, Joshua. Whoa. That'd be interesting. Can you imagine having Moses going through Genesis, Leviticus, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy in heaven before us all, before the Jews, before the church? I'll bring up Moses. Here he is. He'll, he'll instruct the class on the first bite. That will outdo any Bible college or school or seminary in the world right now today. When you have the person that wrote the books or are of the book, if they were to teach us. You imagine if we get to heaven? I don't know if it's going to happen. Just, I mean, we're gonna, this, the Word of God will outstand anything. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God shall never pass away. Jesus, it would be great if Jesus devised amongst the twelve apostles, including Paul. I'm going to let them teach the Gospels. I'm going to let them teach. 
the way I live. Never mind going to the Holy City. Imagine Peter, James, and John and all that describing to us what the Holy Land experience was for Jesus. Imagine Luke getting up to explain his. Ma imagine Matthew getting up to explain his gospel. Well, imagine Joshua getting up and teaching us this book. Only be thou strong and very courageous. That's got to be something because he's mentioned it twice so far. You are not welcome where you're going. Now, let's look at 2426 real quick. Chapter 2426. Twenty four, twenty six, and we're going to see the author of this book. Who is the author? And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. So you see what comes out of the law of God is his book. There it is. Joshua wrote this, and this is attached to the law. So you have... In a proper order, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Law, and Joshua's book. And you know what Joshua wrote? He said twice, be strong and very courageous. Verily, verily. This is important. Joshua is one of few men, I think there are three. We may come to that note. Um, let's see if I have it here. Joshua, I believe, is, is one of three men ever in the world that only lost one battle or no battles at all. And the battle that Joshua lost wasn't even his fault. It was one man. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou doest. And by the close of the book of Joshua, he has done what, God, what Moses told him to do. Now he's a sinner and will see sins. But in the state that Joshua dies by the end of this book, he's going to be in heaven. This book of the law. Well, we just saw in uh, chapter 24, 26, this is part of the book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Again, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. There's a copy on the side of the ark. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So somehow, I don't know if there's another copy, I don't know if there's Joshua's copy, but the Bible says that God says that Joshua wrote that I am to, day and night, I am to read what the law says. You're only going to learn what God expects from you by reading the word of God. And I can assume it would be such a challenge as to me reading the Bible. When I read the Bible and I set by God a, a pattern of reading the Bible, and when I come to a specific day and I read and study, that pertains to what's going on or what has gone on. If I do it prayerfully, if I do it every daily, and I would assume that there are times that Joshua would come up to this part and would be to where his life is. Day and night, thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then, for then, after you do it, thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So you got to obey. You got to do what the word of God said. Jesus said, I am the way. Now, if you're not going to follow Jesus, you're going to do something else. You're not going to be prosperous. You're not, you're out of the way. You're out of fellowship. And God's not pleased with you. And then thou shalt have not only success, good success. Hey, Lord, he stepped it up one more for Joshua. Not only will I give you success, but I'll give you good success. Have not I commanded thee? Here's the third time. Be strong and of good, good courage. It's not going to be easy over there, Joshua. Remember this? Remember you saw giants? <laughs> Those high wall cities, 
Joshua does not know what happened to Jericho yet. Joshua has not laid Ai. He has not fought this, the kings of Jerusalem. He's a man standing at the Jordan River. It is flowing. I, I am told it, flow, it flows wildly. It's a very gushing river. And he's standing there. He looks over that land. And God says three times, you better maintain your courage. First thing he's got to do, he's got to cross that river. Oh, I don't get swept away. Well, the Bible says that the Jordan River parted for him. He don't know that. He's looking at that river and saying, I'm going to cross that river. He has no idea Red Sea. Has no idea. Good courage. He may be afraid of water. Who knows? Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whither so thou goest. Comforting words by God. If God can say, I'm with you. I'll never depart or leave you. When uh, uh, Achan does his sin, God says, I'm not with you guys no more. You get rid of that guy, you get rid of that sin, then I'll come back. We, we have such a promise forever God's going to be with us. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, This is his first command of duty. It's now Joshua, no more Moses. Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals. That's food. Go get some food. We need food. Get some supplies. Get some needs. There you have manna. For within three days, he shall pass over this Jordan. There's a river. We're going to pass over that. To go and possess the land which the Lord your God's giveth you to possess. Now look at that. We're going with God. God's going with us. We've got the victory. Look at that. There's no question in Joshua's mind. We have the victory with God. Let's go. Get ready to go. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, spank Joshua said. Now these are the ones that they're going to settle on the wrong side. Moses has given them land. But Moses said, I will give you on this one condition. You go over there and you fight with your brethren. You leave your wives and your children and your cattle here, but you're going to cross too and you're going to battle. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord... Your God has given you rest. So see, the rest is, this is your land. Two and a half tribes have already got their rest. That's what Acts chapter 7 was talking about. That's what Hebrews chapter 4 was talking about. Once they get in that land and that, that boundary, that line is drawn, there's the rest. Moses gets set the boundaries. He set the landmark. He said, this is your city. This is your city. This is your balance. They've got the rest. Listen, they're going over to fight, but that's the rest. That's your land. The rest is, it's your land. That's what you see in Acts 7, and that's what you see in Hebrews 4. And have given you this land, this land. This is, this is the other side of the river. This is where we are right now. We are on the east side of the Jordan River. That's your land. It's not supposed to be your land, but that's what you got. That's your rest. But you're coming over to fight. Is that a contradiction? I mean, somebody wanted a contradiction in terms of the Bible. Come over and fight with your brethren, but that's rest. But you're looking at the word rest in the wrong way. The lines have been driven. It's it's resting. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you. Notice how Moses gave you, not God. Now I told you before when we saw that happen. It never says the Lord gave it unless Moses gave it. That's one of Moses' sins. He allowed them. Gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. 
So mighty men of valor means that not all the men of these two and a half tribes are going off. They are leaving some men. The armed men, the men capable of going to fight are crossing over. So it's not just women and children not defending themselves. You're going to have old men. You're going to have teenagers. Until the Lord has given your brethren rest. As he has given you. So see, there's that rest we, we read in 7. You got the land. And it's also a rest Joshua can sit back. I'm done battling. As he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. See, the rest, when they got the land. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession. You come back over here and enjoy it. Look at that. Enjoy it. Which Moses the Lord the servant gave you. See, again, Moses gave you this side of Jordan toward the sunrise. And it, it's to rebuke them. God did not give you it. Moses gave it to you. And again, they will be the first to go into captivity. They will be taken in captivity first, and then the, the north, Israel, will go into captivity, and then Judah. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whither so as thou sendest us, we will go. They have now taken Joshua as their commander. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things. <laughs> Wouldn't you think that make Joshua right now quench everything that you guys did to Moses? <laughs> I mean, the times you backlashed him, you, you stabbed him in the back, you went against him, you defrauded God, you cried baby to Moses, you gave him a hard time. I'd rather not have that part. So will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God with thee. As he was with Moses. So. What God spoke to Moses. I mean Joshua. I am with thee. I'll never depart from you. The people have acknowledged it. Whosoever he be that does rebel against thy commandment. And will not hearken unto thy words. In all that thou commandest him. He shall be put to death. Where'd you find that in the law? If you didn't obey your commander, you were to be put to death. There was no way. If you were to kill another man, you'd be put to death. But nowhere, if you get involved in, and turn the people away from God to gods, you were put to death. If you came in idolatry and imagery, you were to be put to death. But nowhere did it say, if we don't listen to our leader, we will be put to death. Only be strong four times and of good courage. Look at that. Four times I just said. They're not going against panty lakes when they cross that river. They're going against the meanest, the cruelest, the wicked. Listen, they eat people, some of these people in the, in the land of promise. Some of these people will kill you just for the fun of it. We found that when we took our men over to, to Asia, we fought against the Japanese, we fought against the Koreans, we fought against uh, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, all those lands over there that we fought. We realized that when they took our POWs, they tortured them. And they were happy to torture them. We got to, listen, there's no rules of armament here. There's no book, oh, you can't do that, the Geneva Connection. There's no Geneva. You're dealing with rough people. The, the roughest people that you can find in the Bible is the Assyrians, the people from Nineveh, the ones that, that uh, Jonah went to preach to. They were rough, they were tough, and they tortured the enemies that they came across. This is hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is sword against sword. There is no push-button warfare here. You saw the eyes of the man you were going to kill. 
the man that wants to kill you. We're now getting into a book of warfare. And people say, thou shalt not kill. How do you explain the book of Joshua? It's going to begin. 